Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining the uh, FX London Open Breakfast. Brilliant. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining um, on this morning. So the markets have opened. They're a bit mixed, actually. Mixed is slightly higher in Europe. Um, and euro dollar is also higher, but let's get going because there's lots of really interesting um, event, well, technical patterns in the market um, levels to watch out for as well. Um, it looks like we really are in, in the middle of kind of a bit of a reassessment. And uh, to just show where we are, I'm going to start obviously uh, with dollar yen because uh, those of you who've been traveling that or tracking that, uh, just bear with me one moment while I pull up my chart. So this is my dollar my dollar yen chart. This is an hourly chart. Um, so as you can see, um, absolutely since kind of the beginning of this month, just been um, you know a, a beautiful uptrend there with a few pullbacks, um, but fairly strong. So we've tested 80. So the range today has been uh, 70, uh, 79. So just below 79.70 to 80.08, um, with 80.08 being the top side for now. But again, we're retesting that. We're currently at 80.04, so we're having a right go at um, this ET level as you see kind of been up there a few times um, I draw your attention just to the MACD though however um, if we just look at the daily chart here so as you can see had that ma what wonderful break up here we were looking at this big level here above the 78.50 level since then it's really just kind of gained in momentum and it's now let me just get my crosshairs one moment um, just below, so about 20 points below that um, August intervention high in dollar yen. Um, so that was when the Bank of Japan came in, and they actually um, they actually bought they actually bought dollar yen to try and weaken the yen. And back in August, didn't really work. Um, but it um, but one thing it did do, obviously, is now provide a really good resistance level um, for this kind of retracement in dollar yen. So um, we do believe, and we we are hearing as well that 80 all the way from 80 to 80 to 25. Um, that there are um, there are uh, there's dollar supply, so that means that there's that's a real you know big profit level in the market. A lot of people have looked at that level as a place to take profit. Obviously, uh, because we've been in this situation before where it looks like the dollar's turning, uh, or dollar you know the dollar's turning versus the yen, and it quite hasn't quite done it, and it's come back to earth again, and people have got burned. So, um, you know, people are going to be cautious on this rally here. Um, so what that means is that um, we're going to see, you know, big levels like this. So obviously the 80 25 or 80 25 to 30 level, that intraday intervention high from the Bank of Japan, uh, that's going to be a really key um, resistance level, we believe. Um, but we have heard that there's a there's good macro um, demand out there as well um, around the as we lead as we as we're leading as we're around the 80 area. Um, so we'll just have to see which plays out. Um, do the do the profit takers play out or the fact that there's um, you know, other uh, resting demand for dollar yen out there around these, you know, fairly high levels, like six month high levels. Uh, you know, is that enough to then kind of continue to push this um, this this rally forward? And, and we tend to believe that it will. Um, that you know, that it, it's a very good sign that yes, investors are going to be cautious. They're going to take profit, but the very fact that other people um, are coming in, um, you know, are, are still waiting to go long um, this rally. Um, suggest that you know the bulls will win out in the end, but obviously you know just to I'll get rid of those crosshairs. Hang on, just to um, you know just to just to draw your your attention back to here and now. Um, yes, we might kind of target the kind of the 81, potentially even the 80, you know the 83 zone um, in the coming week. Um, but for now, it's all about this 80, this kind of 80 level, this 80 20 like 25 level. And right now we do look um, like we're um, you know, entering kind of overbought territory. Uh, so it does suggest that there will be a bit of a pullback. And that, that tallies with what we're hearing in the markets as well. There's, you know, as I said, you know, a big profit-taking area that everyone's been looking at. So do watch out for that. Let's just go back to the hourly quickly. And again, that looks like it turned just a little bit. We may see a pullback. Uh, there's obviously very good support here at 79.85. Uh, before we were to kind of move move back, back forward or move on yet again, uh, but we think that you know the uptrend is in place right now. The uptrend is in place, and if we are, if we do see a pullback towards that 79, 75 to 80 level, uh, that would be very, very normal. Um, so there, you know, just watch that there. But as I said, any pullback could be an, a good opportunity for the bulls to actually go long. So a pullback to that, you know, you may even want to say kind of 79, 65 to 75. Uh, people will probably start going long there as well because we are hearing that there is a lot of demand. 
um, for to go long dollar yen in the macro community. So they're kind of people who hold on to positions for a very long time. Um, so they're not just kind of your day traders. So it suggests that they, this could potentially be, you know, that obviously we could be in the middle of, of a of a full blown trend here. So um, let's certainly watch that. There's obviously a good few reasons. Um, number one, we've seen kind of risk come back on. That typically means that the yen comes off. And number two, the relative policy stances of the Federal Reserve in the U.S. and the Bank of Japan. Uh, you know, the Bank of Japan looks much more kind of stimuli friendly, if you like, compared to the Bank of compared to the Federal Reserve. I mean, that's all weighing on the currency. I mean, added to that, of course, we've also seen some deteriorating economic conditions in Japan relative to the U.S. We've seen the U.S. almost, you know, the dollar almost kind of start to act as a bit of a growth currency. But obviously, the big risk for, for dollar yen, as always, is going to be kind of what's going on in Europe. It seems like we've got over the near-term hurdle, but there are still plenty of other hurdles there. Still a lot of people calling for the Eurozone to break up by the end of the year. We don't necessarily, that's not our base case, but, um, but you know, the fact that that is out there and in the market means that you do have to listen to it. You do have to take a, take, pay attention to it. So further down the line, we think that could be more of a risk. We don't think it's a square though. Okay. The other thing that I want to look at is Eurodollar. And I'm actually going to show you Eurodollar on a different chart on my, on my, um, Bloomberg chart, if you don't mind, purely because you'll get to see it better. It doesn't matter so much about the prices. Um, right. Here we go. You should be able to see my Euro dollar chart on Bloomberg. Uh, this is just a, your regular candlestick chart. But I just want to show you really kind of what we're doing with, with, um, with Euro dollar. Um, in the kind of the, the most immediate term, we are stuck within this range. And as you can see, we're kind of stuck. We're wedged between two daily moving averages. So really, really key support here, which is this uh, pink line, which is 50 day moving average. That comes in at 130.26. And on the upside, um, so far that's kind of thwarted the bulls. Um, that's 133.09. So we're smack bang in the middle of the kind of longer term range. So from that kind of January low of 126 to the high of 133, right now we're between kind of 130 and 133. Um, and that seems to be kind of exactly where we are. Right now we're, we're kind of towards the top of it. Um, so we're currently trading around 132.50. Um, you know, could that be a double top? We'll have to see. It does look like we're going back to, um, to test it again. Let me just zoom in here a moment as well just to show you. Um, great. Here we go. Um, this is kind of the most short-term price action. So as you can see, all the dates along here. This is a daily candlestick chart. Um, so that, you know, the candlesticks, obviously, um, you know, what we've had here is kind of, you know, a series of high lows. Um, interesting that kind of doji, um, yes, or not yesterday, the day before, so on Monday, a, a lot of indecision. Um, obviously that was to do with Greece and what was going on there. But then yesterday we didn't really manage to kind of bust out of that. You know, we've got very short shadows here. Um, you know, the pr price action was really, really range bound. It was really, really tight, which suggests indecision in the market. So the last few, apart from, you know, obviously we had, you know, uh, you know, we've had kind of a series of higher, um, of higher low, of higher highs, um, uh, earlier this week and towards the end of last week, um, which helped the, helped the, get the dollar, get the euro dollar back above that 133 level. Uh, really since this week we've seen indecision. So we've gone from, you know, nice uptrend here to indecision, um, and kind of still remaining trapped within these, um, moving averages. So that suggests to us well, you know, exactly what the, let's just go stick with what the candlestick is saying. It's just people are uncertain. Now, there have been, you know, we have obviously been testing this 133 level, haven't quite managed it and kind of pulled back again. Let me bring up my other chart as well. Um, here you go. I'll just change that to euro just so we can see it at different time frames. This is a 60-minute chart. So as you can see, you know, we have been there before and we have pulled back. Um, what we do need to watch out for, and what some of us pointed out yesterday, is that, you know, we tested 133 yesterday, then we went to test it again at a lower level. Um, that's going to be what we're really going to watch out for. Yesterday, the high was 132.93. Today, so far, so we've only just started, it's 132.64. So we are going to have to kind of watch that. That's going to be really important. We've been a bit erratic over in kind of recent weeks. You could, recent weeks. You could call this potentially a little bit, well, you can't really, but, 
you know, some people may argue there's a little bit of a kind of a head and shoulders coming up here, um, but a bit of a strange looking head and shoulders to be honest, and, and those patterns are so rarely um, correct that we need to look at them. Obviously, there is support here at 132.30. Um, if we bounce off that, we may try another 133, but just the fact that we keep doing it, um, you know, this is these are our attempts at 133. It's very, very messy. It's been very erratic. Um, we haven't uh, managed to break above it um, in, you know, in, in the best part of kind of a week now. Um, we've kind of continued to try um, to test it, uh, moving higher, um, but, uh, you know, we keep faltering at that level. Uh, as I mentioned, um, and those of you who follow us on Twitter may have seen this yesterday, it's a real worry when you're it's a real worry for the bulls if you're testing something that you keep testing it at a lower level. So I am slightly concerned here um, that we could be getting to, you know, if we draw a line down here, we're getting to a bit of a triangle. We need to really bust out here. If we don't, if we fail, then it's just kind of potentially a deeper pullback, maybe towards that kind of 130, 175 level. And then, of course, as I, as you saw in the other chart, um, it's that 130-30 level, which is the 50-day moving average, which is, kind of more longer term support and it also kind of tallies in with with this low here from from the from last week so the beginning of last week so over a week ago now so um you know is is important we're very much range bound um and we it feels like that kind of indecision the candlesticks that we're seeing um don't necessarily suggest to me right now that we are um going to be breaking in out of any ranges so right now so if we don't retest 133, um, we could potentially weaken and we kind of another, we could see some more weakness down towards that 132.30 level, then towards kind of 132, 131, 75. So we could kind of just even limit our ranges even more. Uh, but I do just want to point out the fact that we have been testing 133 at lower levels. So do watch out for that one. Um, it's something to keep your eye on right now. We're still very much range bound. We don't think there's enough decision in the market. We don't think there's enough certainty out there to get us out of this range. Um, and that can, you know, that's gonna, that's certainly gonna, um, kind of euro dollar, but also the euro crosses, uh, for some time. Um, and it does suggest that, you know, there isn't, it, it should keep other FX pairs in, um, it should take, it should essentially, um, mean that, um, you know, we, it should essentially mean that other FX pairs will also be range bound for now, and I'll take a look at the Aussie in a minute. Someone just said that, is there a way that you can tell from price action if people are taking profit? Well, you know, uh, the answer is no, not really. If you can't look at this chart and say, hang on a minute, that fell off there, that didn't, or that, that spikes there, and then there must have been like, you know, good few people taking profit. Unfortunately, we can't, because that's not the way that the FX market works. It's not run an exchange. Um, so we just, we listen to what banks are saying. Uh, we're on, obviously in that privileged position whereby we see that. Um, I know a lot of you guys probably won't be if you're in the, um, if you're in the retail space. Um, but generally around big levels, you can see it. You can just sense it. So I can sense here that people are taking profit at 133 because again, we've kind of come up here, uh, you know, had a, a, a nice enough rally. It's been a little bit bumpy. I think people, when they get to 133, are like, okay, fine, I'm out, I'm out of here. I'm taking my profits now because I'm just not 100% sure. We've obviously got that key 100-day moving average that we mentioned at 133.30. That's a really key resistance level. There's still so much going on with Greece. Let's take money off the table. And that's what I mean here. We're then kind of, you know, people aren't really willing to go back to 133. So we're then kind of seeing it, um, you know, seeing a series of lower, a kind of lower, lower attempts to, to reach it. So, you know, as I said, you know, people will also take profit at, um, people will also take profit in dollar yen at 80, uh, between kind of 80 and 80 to 25. But we are hearing that there's an awful lot of other bids going in. So, you know, we're testing 80 and we're going above it. So we keep going above it. Whereas with what, with what we've seen in euro dollar, we haven't actually got above 133 in any convincing way at all. In fact, every time we would go and retest it, we're retesting it at lower levels, as you can see here which is kind of worrying. So uh, that's what I'm kind of concerned on and what I'm looking at now. Now, I just said that I'd look at the Aussie, and I will, because obviously Eurodollar very much range bound. Uh, we kind of see the same thing happening in, in uh, Aussie, yeah, in uh, Aussie dollar. Um, so here, as you can see, obviously that 108 level has been at high. Um, so we're kind of 
testing between kind of 106.12 and 106.82. So we kind of got a bit of the, um, you know, it's, it's got its, it's, it's, um, it's, sorry, it's landed kind of on its feet again, uh, but it is below its 21 day moving average at 106.90. Um, um, yeah, we are hearing that there's a lot of kind of resting uh, bids at 106. So essentially 106 should act as fairly good um, support. Let's take a look at the hourly. Uh, we did see it kind of fall um, all the way to kind of 10606, and that and that and that really held. So we are um, we are very much kind of with, or we're encouraged by that as a level of support. The fact that we've gone been down, we've tested it, and it's come back up again. But again, we believe that you know it's kind of um, there's good as you know there's good support between kind of 106 10 to 20. Um, likewise, you know really tough resistance here on the way up to 107. The fact that we've hit 107. Um, then we've kind of come down again, again slightly more worrying. I uh, suggest we could have put a near term top in at 107. Uh, but as I said, you know 106, we could be, you know, this is just range bound activity from one as the closer that we get to kind of 106, 10, 20, uh, the more likely there are going to be kind of off the, uh, there's going to be kind of bids coming in for Aussie dollar. So um, oh, that's kind of interesting to watch. And someone's just said, where do I hear, you know, the rumours of resting bids and stuff like that? You really just hear it in the market. Um, you know, there isn't one place that you go to. Obviously, a lot of it is kind of rumour, and that's how it's taken with. You take it with a bit of pinch of salt sometimes. I mean, you just hear it from kind of known people in the markets, and, and that's this, that, and the other. It's not very easy, of course, for um, people to people in the retail market to, to get that information. I mean, was one thing I would say, like, you know, if you read the blogs, so if you read kind of, you know, obviously FX Street, um, there's some other, you know, FX blogs out there. Even if you look like DFT sometimes um, in the companies in, mar in the market section of DFT, and um, they'll sometimes, you know, their journalists are very good. They talk to the markets a lot, um, and they'll also um, mention uh, kind of things like, you know, what the market's thinking about, um, you know, what the, the kind of the big rumours are out there. It doesn't always mean they work. Half the time they don't. Okay, now I've spent a lot of time on euro, dollar, dollar yen, and Aussie, uh, but I do just want to show you one last thing on the Aussie euro, Aussie. Um, uh, Euro Aussie is getting thwarted at this kind of one to four fifty level. So again, Euro Aussie tends to rally during periods of risk aversion, like we've seen. Um, but it, it does look like it's not go; it's, it's reached a top. Um, so again, this just kind of plays into our whole risk, our whole um, range trading um, for kind of the main FX pairs, or for the uh, take out the dollar yen. Um, but we're, uh, you know, the it suggests that we're not going to stay in this period for much longer. That's what it says. Um, it really means to us that we're, uh, you know, or it really suggests to us that, you know, we're just in a bit of indecision. We could break out on the upside or the downside at the moment. We just need to wait and see, see what the, um, what the, what the markets tell us. But obviously, euro was even that strong. That tends to mean that kind of risk overall is quite weak. Someone wants to take a look at cable, and we're more than happy to do that. And then I want to take a look at gold and stocks as well. So I won't forget that. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes. That's okay. So again, like you know, cable, very, very similar story. Uh, this is just the hourly. Let's take a quick look at the daily just to show you what's kind of going on. Really stuck in a range. It's all range trading activity. Uh, the 200-day moving average, which is the red line on your chart here, above 159, is acting as really, really tough resistance, whereas we've got fairly good um, support kind of up just below 157. So quite a tight 200 pip range, really. Uh, nothing else. Um, you know, it's being jostled around. It's not necessarily moving on the back of its own fundamentals. We obviously did have QE um, from the from the Bank of England earlier this month. Um, not even that has really kind of derailed or had too much of an impact on sterling. Um, we've also got um, we've also had um, we also or we will have at 9:30 this morning a Bank of England minute. Um, that will be, you know, that, you know, they're, again, will, people will be watching them. Uh, it could cause a bit of volatility, uh, but by and large, cable is kind of moving with everything else. Now, you know, there's been, you know, a big sell-off or a bit of a sell-off um, around this kind of 158 level. Um, this morning or in the, over the past hour just at the London Opens, we've seen some weakness in cable there. It could be because of waiting for these minutes. There could be a bit of, a bit of kind of a sell-off before these minutes. Um, but overall, we think that um, the pound is going to move um, in line with general risk appetite. I want to show you euro pound as well, um, because I think this plays into it. Uh, euro pound, again, it's running into resistance here at this 84 level. 
Now, this has been quite interesting because sometimes um, when we get into kind of strange risk aversion mode, uh, euro, euro dollar tends to, or euro pound, sorry, tends to sell off, but we haven't. We've seen it kind of move higher um, as the pound has, be, has come, un, has, has been weaker than the euro over recent weeks. Um, so that's kind of an interesting one, but we are running into this really heavy level of between kind of 84 and 84.25, um, which is kind of worth watching out for. Again, though, we need, do need to see the outcome of the minute. And um, we do tend to think that the pound is, you know, that the fundamental backdrop of the pound is very weak. Uh, you know, you've got physical consolidation, you've got QE. Um, Add to that, you've obviously, you know, you know, neither of those things are, are fairly good. Uh, but we need to see just how much QE there is. And the fact is, if the Bank of England say in its minutes aren't as dovish as some expect, we could see euro pound fall off. So that's what I prefer actually, rather than cable, purely because we are at this key level. Um, so if we are at this key level, we may, may see a bit of a rebound back to that kind of. You know, if we were to fall below kind of 83.75-ish or 83.70, and then it may suggest a pull, deeper pull back towards that 83.50 level. Okay? Um, so I do think that's kind of certainly worth watching. Now, I do also want to show you, um, bear with me, my goal, some goal, uh, uh, a gold chart. I'm going to show it to you on Bloomberg because I like Bloomberg's gold chart. Right, here we go. Um, this is our gold price. So as you can see, gold price is, you know, it's been kind of thundering ahead yesterday. But I will actually just zoom that. So here you go. Uh, you can see that it had a really, really sharp jump up. Obviously, uh, then we took kind of a bit of, uh, a bit of, um, a bit of uh, kind of indecision. Uh, a little bit of kind of that's a kind of a daisy there. Um, uh, this is a you know another another kind of daisy, a little bit of indecision as we approach the key level at 1760. Um, now um, 1760 obviously is is kind of a major level. It's one to watch out for. It's acted as resistance before. Um, however, uh, you know we're above all our major moving averages. Um, it does suggest that you know potentially we could then. Uh, if we can get above one, uh, get above 1760, we could then potentially get to 70 to 1800. Um, now 1800 is going to be such a stiff resistance level. Um, I'm just going to annotate this chart a little tiny bit. Um, it's obviously thwarted gold gains in the past. Um, But it's, uh, you know, it, it looks like we're heading that way. That's what the technical signals are telling us. Uh, we're obviously ten kind of the top here at the 1760 level. If we can punch above there, a nice ascending triangle does suggest that the next level to watch for, at least in kind of the near to medium or short to near term, is this 1800 level. Uh, gold is obviously getting very attractive. We've still got problems in the eurozone. People are still looking for the eurozone to break up. We've got an awful lot of loose monetary, money monetary policy worldwide, and um, so a lot of liquidity in the market, and that is generally, uh, you know causing a few fears about inflation out down the line. So people are starting to buy gold again as a bit of an inflation hedge. Uh, that's some of the things that we're hearing. Uh, someone's just asked, is market talk of something? Is that another way of saying a rumor? Well, no, not necessarily. Sometimes, you know, the market does talk or people in the market talk and they have ideas and things like that. So it's, you know, it's a big melting pot in here, over here, right? So, you know, you've got to take everything you hear with a, cent with a pinch of salt, but then it's important to know it because it's important to know what the market's going on with. Um, so that's kind of always an important thing to point out. And um, the other thing um, that I want to show you, so this is gold, I also want to show you um, the S&P. So just bear with me while I pull up one of my charts um, and then we'll, right, let's do that. So the other big move obviously was in um, the Dow yesterday, it hit 13,000 or got above 13,000. Um, Right, so here we go. Um, some of you who have joined me before will know that I look at this. Um, the orange line is the Dow Jones Transportation Index, and the white line is the Dow Jones. Uh, that hit 13,000 yesterday. It did come off, though. There was a bit of profit taking around that level, and that's going to be a really key resistance level. Um, some real Dow theorists out there are going to be very worried because the transport index, which tends to track this index very closely, has come off very, very sharply. So there's a big divergence there. 
Um, in the past, when they diverge, they tend to come back together very, very quickly. As I said, the market is in a period of indecision. We're seeing that in a euro dollar, that's for sure. Um, we just need to see which way it goes. So which way will, um, you know, will, will the Dow fall back towards transport or is this something? Um, all right, somebody's just asked, asked a question. Um, and I think that the FX admin can ask that just to answer, you know, how do they reply to a private message? Um, I think that's the, uh, if the FX admin could do that, that would be great. Um, but these two do move together. So it is a bit worrying that the Dow has hit um, kind of these, like, you know, 2008 highs, haven't really managed to kind of sustain it. And since then, there's kind of, uh, the, and, and then, you know, we get, we're not getting that follow through in the, in the transportation index. So that's kind of an interesting one. Um, you know, if the Dow fails, someone's asked, um, can we expect the U.S. to go into a second recession in the next six months? Um, doesn't look like we're going to go into a second recession in the next six months because if you look at some there, some um, if you look at some of the key um, if you look at some of the key indicators, your isms, your PMIs, um, you know that there are you know they are pointing higher. However, they are pointing to the fact that there's a bit of an inventory. Overbills, which is kind of boosted manufacturing industries and the like, um, which suggests that it may not um, be able to, um, or the pace of growth, the pace of recovery that we've seen in the US may not be able to be sustained. However, what is quite interesting is that the housing market is picking up, and we're going to get housing data later on today. Um, you know, if we do see a turn in the housing market, could that take over from manufacturing production? Um, and really kind of help domestic growth in the U.S. So right now, I think it's way too early to say that, there's, that, that we could see, you know, that we're in any way pricing in a second recession. Now, we do think that, you know, potentially things ahead go, you know, in the future will be, you know, the pace of growth rate, rate will necessarily be um, picked up. So that's why, you know, investors are getting very nervous around these 13,000 levels and why we may see a bit of a pullback. Um, you know, we've had such a fantastic run up um, since kind of October last year. You know, we've had a fantastic, you know, we've done fantastically well. I'll just show you here. This is how far we've done. You know, we've had a 20% move, so we're in a bull market now. Um, so there may be further to go, but it is kind of, it is kind of worth just pointing out that there is this discrepancy, and we suggest we could kind of pull back. Um, again, you know, a pullback at this level would be perfectly normal. If we were to pull back towards kind of the 12,000 level, or get below that 12,500 level, then we may be worried, and there may be something, some sort of change to the macro environment. But for short-term traders, that's useful. For those of you who kind of are buying and hold, holding, um, you know, a if you a, you know a, a short position that you watched very carefully and were very nimble about getting out of may work best for you um, over the next six months. Because we do yep. be a slowdown in the pace of appreciation anyway, and obviously we've had a big, huge move up already. Gains going forward may be slightly a shorter lived, um, so it might be better if you want to go long to wait until we get to you know wait till we see the pullback. And rather than jump on straight away. But there is still a lot of bulls out there who are, you know, very happy to jump on the back of this trend. You know, remember added to that, you know, interest bonds are incredibly low, so interest rates are really low. And that could also, um, you know, filter into, you know, there's a lot of loose monetary policy around. That will also filter into um, stocks. Uh, and it could sustain gains for another couple of months, um, you know, essentially, uh, before that liquidity starts to be withdrawn. Uh, it maybe starts weighing on the economy a little bit, um, and then that's when we could see kind of the deep pullback in, in stock. So we don't think that's on the cards yet, but it's not beyond the realm of possibility for kind of the middle of this year. Okay, everybody, um, that's my time up. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Um, I hope you enjoy your next session. I also hope you guys can join me on Friday. Um, and uh, good luck with your trading. Um, as we said, you know, the markets are in decision mode. Um, of course they are because of everything that's going on in Greece. So, uh, again, thank you very much. And please do join me on, uh, on Friday. Thanks, everybody.